Welcome back to the Weekend Marathon. Thank you so much for staying tuned. Remember, I was too interactive on our Diamond TV Zambia Facebook page. And our lead conversation is right there for you to see. Let's be interactive. Give us your thoughts on what we are talking about. Right now, we move on to our next discussion, which is about all things agriculture. Now, from the inception of its flagship smart agriculture program, Zambia Berries has consistently looked to not only help the yields of local farmers, but also guarantee access to only the best organic ingredients for some of its most popular brands like Castle, Mossy, and Eagle Lager. To discuss more on the investment made in agriculture by Zambia Berries and Zambia Berries being considerate of its consumers' welfare, we're joined by Deborah Walia from Zambia Breweries, joining us remotely via Zoom. Good morning. Welcome to the Weekend Marathon. Good morning and thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Great, great. Deborah, um, let's start off the conversation with talking about the Smart Agriculture Program. How is this faring so far? Uh, extremely well, really well. I think it's uh, an amazing project. And I'd like to start by putting a little bit of context around what you might call um, our corporate social responsibility projects. Uh, but I'd like to explain a little bit what that means and how we see it at Zambian Breweries, because a lot of people, you call it CSR, Corporate uh, social responsibility and a lot of people conceptualize that as big companies making donations you know sort of being kind and just giving a little bit of money here and there but um, at uh, AB InBev and that's uh, the shareholder the majority shareholder of Zambian breweries we have um, a very uh, meaningful I would say sustainability program and so sustainability is all about making your operations work over the long term because you're taking into account everybody's interests and you're not infringing anybody's interests. So I think in order really for uh, CSR to, to work, it has to be part of your core business. It has to be part of what you really are all about. So you might ask that question, well, what's agriculture got to do with producing bottles of beer on a line? And I'm sure some of you have been able to come and, and see our bottles being, being made. You know, they go around on that machinery. So what have bottles of beer got to do with agriculture? You think that's a little bit far removed. But then stop and think, what's beer made of? It is made of naturally ingredients you know it's made of malt which comes from barley uh, hops which actually we, I must admit we import that it's made of water and um, I'm going to talk a bit about our cassava program I think those of you especially more in the north of the country copper belt you will enjoy our eagle product which has quite a big cassava component and so that's where our value chain comes in. We have to buy those agricultural products. And so, you know, how do we do that? Well, we get more involved in just, you know, put it, making an order and sending the money and then come and deliver those products to our plant. We actually have programs that uh, encourage um, local agriculture. We do have a barley program with commercial farmers to make the malt and we have a malting uh, pro, uh, plant uh, in the Lusaka South MFES. And so we no longer buy malt barley from outside the country. So that's some sort of economic push. Um, but the cassava program is more recent, and we actually use subsistence farmers, mainly Lupula and northern provinces, uh, which were quite impoverished. And the way we've managed to do that is to um, aggregate. So the small farmers, they will sell, they will deliver their produce to sort of uh, middlemen, and then it comes to us. So it really benefits uh, a lot of the, the small farmers, and it benefits us. And it's not charity, as I've said, because we need it to make our beer, and it's quite a popular, Eagle is a very popular product. So um, I, I can talk a lot more. I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about um, how that program works and all the other things that we're doing for the farmers. But perhaps I'll, I'll give you a chance. Uh, I've talked a lot to ask me some other questions if mm -hmm. you'd like to. 
Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, Deborah, just, just continuing, uh, coincidentally, with, with, with that uh, line of thought. You, you've mentioned uh, using some of these um, uh, subsistence farmers, the, the, the small-scale farmers, a small guy. Um, and, and with that being yes. said, and, yes. and, yeah, and Zambian breweries continuing to procure locally from uh, you know, these, these small-scale farmers, what sort of impact um, is Zambia breweries, uh, you know, leaving uh, in their trail as, as this is this is being done? Yeah, thanks for that. That's a really great question. Uh, I think a very big impact, and I really wish I, I had been organized enough to to give you a video footage of you know the local people. In particular, there's one I've seen a video of one of the chiefs talking about just how much enrichment and local empowerment it's brought to his region and how happy he was. And so that's what I did want to talk to you about. So this program, yes, it empowers and women women and youth who are into farming and i believe that in zambia there are a lot of women farmers you know um so it's really empowered across the board in some of the most impoverished areas and then the program we have it uh, has a lot of developmental issues so i'll talk about two things one is crop development and the second is sort of the use of blockchain technology to um, provide a, a simple and quick um, payment platform and also to roll out some um, training on finance. So it's it's really quite far reaching. So um, you might have heard of another one of these you know, modern expressions, shared value propositions. So that means that we partner, we partner with a leading bank, we partner with leading cell phone providers. So we use this blockchain technology and I would want to pretend that I'm clever enough to explain what that is to you, but I'm not. And that's another story for another day. But just know it's a, a, an electronic platform which enables us to reach out through sort of the mobile phone network and to easily pay the farmers because you have to remember one of the difficulties in really uh, reaching out to people in these areas is it's very remote and they don't have education they don't have access to bank accounts so how do you pay them well we can do that simply through this technology and also using this technology we can roll out through smartphones and simple phones some financial um training to the local farmers and that empowers them even more and then I would also like to talk about the partnerships we have with some of the NGOs um, and also our group, our AB InBev programs, where we, um, we look into improving crop resistance and crop varieties. And, and you were talking about getting the best organic um, materials inputs for our products so that's part of it and we do that for sorghum there's some small some of our products have a small element of sorghum as well and cassava and so that means that uh, it's maybe in developing the crops for the farmers to grow them more easily so it's development for them in those regions and it's development for us because we then get uh, you know good quality product which benefits our consumers um, and that's going back to what I was talking about sustainability you know it's sort of like quid pro quo you scratch my back I'll scratch yours if we're helping the farmers they're also helping us which means that's a story that is going to grow um, so yes I mean it is just a fantastic program and then strangely enough at the beginning, we had fears that all of a sudden, when the farmers in those local areas knew um, our Zambian breweries is buying cassava, uh, we couldn't offtake enough. They were producing so much. But I think we held some workshops with government participation to come and get some other players on board, you know, who would want to buy that cassava, offtake the cassava. And I, I, I understand now that there are actually a lot of offtakers of the cassava in those areas uh, because it has a lot of uses you know um biogas other um other commercial usages so that's 
what sustainability is all about as well. It grows in so many ways. It's like the stone that goes into the pond and then it creates those ripples. Um, so so it, it really, I can answer your question that in terms of the local farmers um, and the cassava project, project, it's really hugely successful. Now, let's talk about also COVID-19 and its effects on so many sectors. Yours as Zambia Beer is being one of them. How do you project the trading environment and the business environment going forward, uh, looking at the current situation? Um, well, uh, obviously, it has been an impediment. And, um, you know, the issue is that the bars have been closed. At least the trading hours have reduced. Um, and... I would like to say first and foremost that Zambian breweries really um, works hand in hand with government objectives and we have, you know, we definitely have always encouraged the bars to keep strictly to those COVID regulations and that means, you know, the sanitizing, whatever, and uh, face masks and um, keeping strictly to those hours. So we've never sort of lobbied or wanted to infringe any of those um, regulations which have been put in place for public protection. Um, but that said, remember, uh, we've encouraged a lot sort of home consumption and uh, what we call um, off-premise consumption, where you, you buy the beer in ShopRite or at an off-license, the licensed premises, and then you consume it at home. And I must say that uh, last year, our sales did not go down. And so, uh, you know, we did publish our results. It's not a secret. And our revenues and volumes were, were sustained. Uh, so that goes to the fact that you can enjoy our product in the comfort of your own home and safely. And then, you know, we also do have um, a lot of COVID uh, protection and regulations within the plant. And, and, and we've had to take all of that very seriously. So um, I, I think it, it, we, we can say we're still a success story. Uh, but of course, you know, there has been an impact and I think we were very worried about the impact of it when the pandemic first struck. But I, I think we've managed to, to overcome that obstacle and we've managed to overcome it, especially by encouraging our staff, you know, our production staff, keep, keep on you know, doing what you have to do within the framework of those safety environments. We've, environment. we've done the best to get the beer out there uh, in that uh, constrained framework. Okay. Now, with you saying that the sales haven't gone down even uh, during COVID times, uh, that means there's been a high demand for uh, ZB brands. But with this happening, it calls for great responsibility. So how Zambia Brewery is working uh, in, uh, maybe with the Lusaka Council to just make sure that this happens, that there's responsibility, great responsibility, and people are consuming your products responsibly? Yes, uh, um, I mean, we have what we call our smart drinking uh, programs, and that's all about drinking responsibly, and it has various aspects. But we have partnered uh, both in the past and currently with the Lusaka City Council and so mainly what we've been looking at is uh, training programs for bar owners and uh, we've been trying to roll some of them out um, through like Zoom links electronically during the COVID period because it's very difficult for us to go and meet. I think uh, in between wave one and wave two we had um when things settled down a bit we did have some physical meetings both in indola and uh, the lusaka city council here in lusaka so um we've kept that program alive and we're envisaging more um you know education campaigns so the campaigns that we have with the the content of those campaigns are targeted at bar owners it's, you know, basically a legal compliance, making sure that they are licensed and that they know how to get their licenses and maintain their licenses. And that includes, you know, fire certificates and health permits so that all those protections for the public are in place. 
Um, and then we talk about storing the product uh, correctly. We talk about maintaining COVID regulations. We talk a little bit about making sure that your finances are um, you know, kept and your records are kept and your taxes are kept up to date. Just to give in small entrepreneurs, which is what bar owners are, a, a push and some education and some assistance and to make sure they know how to contact uh, Lusaka um, City Council officials if they, they need help in obtaining their licenses, etc. So, um, that and, and we talked about your quality, you know, as I said, storing the beer, because again, one of the big issues is the bar owners, that's the other end of our value chain. So, if you start from uh, the agricultural side, uh, we have to get those inputs from somewhere. But once we've made the beer, we don't own um, those bars. We have to uh, sell the beer out to through distributors to, to retailers and bar owners. But we also have a concern for them because they are our stakeholders. And without those bar owners, if they're not prosperous or if they're doing something that harms the community, I mean, opening hours, for example, uh, if they are, you know, making noise very late in the night and it, it disturbs communities, COVID aside, that they will then be shut down by the city council. And then, you know, nobody will be able to get the, the beer or enjoy our product. So that's why we have to be very mindful of those issues. And um, apart from the city council, we I think we have a big push on youth uh, coming um, and we have a campaign coming out towards the end of the year on smart drinking, which is just teaching people, you know, don't drink and drive, uh, no underage drinking and we have had in the past and we will have in the future a mentorship program which targets the youth uh, and uh, the program we had previously it involved a lot of sort of empowerment projects where we would work with different entities um, on small projects ranging from, you know, music and dance and poetry, swimming, um, media, producing small films, because the, the thinking behind it is sometimes the youth can turn to alcohol in a harmful way, underage drinking, because they don't have hope, because they don't have skills to to, you know get their lives on track so it was sort of train a tree and, and teach people that there you know there's a certain way that pathway and a way you should lead your life you can consume alcohol when you're of the correct age and you can make informed decisions and you should consume it in a way that is moderate and safe and again, that's sustainable because if our product is harming people, we will not be able to continue selling it. Okay. So I hope that gives you some of the necessary insights. And I'm sure it's a topic that we can expand on. And as we you know, move in, into the last part Definitely. of the year, I'm sure you'll invite us to talk about that again. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Deborah, for joining us on the show. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Yes, and you too. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show, and, and thanks again for inviting me. All right, we're joined by uh, Deborah Walia from Zambia Bureaus. We'll be looking at all things investment in agriculture, and also them considering the welfare of their consumers with what they have going on, such as their Memorandum of Understanding with the Lusaka City Council. We do have more coming up on the Weekend Marathon. We are going to be speaking with the, the Director General for NEMA, is the national health insurance management authority so if you're on the scheme bet you have some questions that you would love to uh, have answered or asked during the program so that's coming up shortly as we also continue with our lead conversation for today all things petitions behind numbers what does this entail when we talk about the just ended elections keep the conversation going on our diamond tv zambia facebook page <laughs>